In this paper, the authors propose co-fine-tuning state-of-the-art vision language models on both robotic trajectory data and internet scale vision language tasks, such as visual question answering, with the goal being to enable a single end-to-end -end trained model to both learn to map robot observations to actions and enjoy the benefits of large-scale pre-training on language and vision language data from the web. In contrast to other approaches, it is a simple general recipe to achieve this goal. In order to fit both of natural language responses and robotic actions into the same format, one expresses the actions as text tokens and incorporates them directly into the training set of the model in the same way as natural language token. I, I think that there's a, a lot of a lot of useful things we can get out of uh, language models like you know if I, if I need to uh, if someone asks me to fetch milk, uh, well maybe I need to go find a refrigerator. I know that refrigerators tend to be in kitchens so I'll go find the kitchen. At the same time, there's certain things that a language model won't really tell you. And there's a there's a reason for this, which is that certain things are very easy for people, but very hard for machines. And the things that are easy for us, we don't tend to put them into words. So we don't we don't tend to write instruction manuals about how to uh, use your neurons to actuate your muscles to pick up a fork so you can eat dinner, because like people don't need instructions for that. But robots do need those instructions. So so I think that there's this gap, and exactly those things where the gap between humans and robots is largest are those things that we will not be able to get out of language. And that's okay. That, that, that's okay. That, that, that means that, you know, I'm, I'm going to remain gainfully employed. Uh, and we as roboticists can figure out uh, embodied learning methods that will take care of those behaviors and then interface them appropriately with the rich semantics contained in language models. But, but that's where we get into the challenge. They refer to such a category of models as vision language action models, or VLA, and instantiating an example of such a model called RT2, standing for Robotics Transformer 2. There are several categories of vision language models. Perhaps the two most relevant are 1. Representation learning models, which learn common embeddings for both modalities, and 2. Visual language models of the form vision and text, introducing the class text, which learn to take vision and language as input and provide free-form text. This work focuses on the latter category. Rather than using pre-training vision models or pre-trained language models, pre-trained vision language models, VLMs, are used, which provide rich, grounded knowledge about the world. The vision language models that the authors build on this work take as input one or more images and produce a sequence of tokens, which conventionally represents natural language text. Adapting two previously proposed VLMs to act as VLA models, Pali X and Palm E, these vision language action model versions are referred to as RT2 Pali X and RT2 Palm E, leveraging instantiations of these models that range in size from billions to tens of billions of parameters. To enable vision language models to control a robot, they must be trained to output actions. The direct approach to this problem is to represent actions as tokens in the model's output, which are treated in the same way as language tokens. The authors base their action encoding on the discretization proposed by Brohan from the RT1 model. The action space consists of six DOF positional rotational displacement of the robot end effector, as well as the level of extension of the robot gripper and special discrete command for terminating the episode which should be triggered by the policy to signal successful completion. The continuous dimensions, meaning all dimensions except for the discrete termination command, are discretized in 256 bins uniformly. Thus, the robot action can be represented using ordinals of the discrete bins as eight integer numbers. A key technical detail of the training recipe that improves robot performance is co-fine-tuning robotics data with original web data instead of naive fine-tuning on robot data only. This leads to more generalizable policies, since policies are also exposed to abstract concepts from web-scale data, instead of just robot actions. One important distinction between RT2 and standard VLMs is that RT2 is required to output valid action tokens for execution on the real robot. Thus, to ensure that RT2 outputs valid action tokens during encoding, its output vocabulary is constrained via only 
sampling valid action tokens when the model is prompted with a robot action task. The authors developed a protocol that allowed RT2 models to run on robots by deploying them in a multi-TPU cloud service and querying this service over the network. With this solution, it's possible to achieve a suitable frequency of control and also serve multiple robots using the same cloud service. The largest model evaluated, the 55 billion parameter RT Poly X 55 billion model, can run at a frequency of 1 to 3 Hz. The smaller version of that model consisting of 5 billion parameters can run at a frequency of around 5 Hz. Their experiments focused on real-world generalization and emergent capabilities of RT2. Evaluating their approach in several baselines with about 6,000 evaluation trajectories in a variety of conditions, Unless specified otherwise, a 7DOF mobile manipulator with action space is used. They train two specific instantiations of RT2 that leverage pre-trained VLMs. One RT2 Poly X built from 5 billion and 55 billion parameters Poly X, and two RT2 Palm E built from 12 billion Palm E. For training, they leverage the original web scale data which consist of visual question answering, captioning, and unstructured interwoven image and text examples. Then combine it with the robot demonstration data, which was collected with 13 robots over 17 months in an office kitchen environment. For all RT2 training runs, the hyperparameters from the original Pali X and Palm E papers were adopted, including learning rate schedules and regularizations. A comparison is done on multi-state-of-the-art baselines. VC1, MOO, R3M, RT1, that challenge different aspects of this model. All of the baselines use the same exact robotic data. To evaluate in distribution performance as well as generalization capabilities, the RT Poly X and RT Palm E models are compared to the four baselines. For the scene task category, we use the same suite of scene instructions as RT1, which include over 200 tasks. Note that these in distribution evaluations still vary the placement of objects and factors such as time of day and robotic position, requiring the skills to generalize to realistic variability in the environment. Figure 3 shows example generalization evaluations, which are split into unseen categories, objects, backgrounds, and environments, and are additionally split into easy and hard tasks. These evaluations consist of over 280 tasks that focus primarily on pick and place skills in many diverse scenarios. The performance on scene tasks is similar between RT2 models and RT1, with other baselines attaining a lower success rate. The difference between the RT2 models and the baseline is most pronounced in the various generalization experiments, suggesting that the strength of vision language action models lies in transferring more generalizable visual and semantic concepts from their internet scale pre-training data. The Palm E version of RT2 seems to perform better than the RT2 Poly X in harder versions in generalization scenarios, while underperforming on easier ones, resulting in a similar average performance, as shown in figure 4 on page 8. The open source language table simulation environment is used to provide an additional point of comparison. They co-fine-tune a smaller Pali 3 billion model on several prediction tasks, including in-domain VQA tasks, for language table datasets, and evaluate the resulting policy in simulation. A significant performance boost is observed when using their model compared to the baselines indicating that the VLM-based pre-training together with the expressiveness of the large Pali model can be beneficial in other scenarios, in this case, simulation with a different robot. It also demonstrates a qualitative real-world out-of-distribution behaviors as seen in Table 1 on page 9. On the one hand, um, there is the school of thought that says data from robots is expensive and hard to get. Internet data is cheap and plentiful. So perhaps the way to get large pre-trained reusable models in robotics is to maximally pull in things like YouTube videos or uh, large data sets like EO4D to get an understanding of the world from humans 
and then sprinkle a little bit of robot data on top of that to basically ground it in robot actions. In addition to evaluating the generalization capabilities of vision language action models, the aim is to also evaluate the degree to which such models can enable new capabilities between those demonstrated in the robot data by transferring knowledge from the web. The authors refer to such capabilities as emergent in the sense that they emerge by transferring internet scale pre-training. They do not expect such transfer to enable new robotic motions, but they do expect semantic and visual concepts, including relations and nouns to transfer effectively, even in cases where these concepts were not seen in the robotic data. First, the RT2 Poly X model is evaluated to determine various emergent capabilities transferred from vision language concepts. Through explanation, it's found that RT2 inherits novel capabilities in terms of semantic understanding and basic reasoning in the context of the scene. To quantify these emergent capabilities, they took the top two baselines from the previous evaluations, RT1 and VC1, and compared them against RT2 Pal E X and RT2 Palm E. It observed that their VLA models significantly outperformed the baselines across all categories, with the best RT2 Pal e X model achieving more than 3x average success over the next best baseline RT1. It's also noted that while the larger Pal e X base model results in better symbol understanding, reasoning, and performance recognition than average, the smaller Palm E base models has an edge on tasks that include math reasoning, as seen in figure 6, page 10. The authors observed that training a very large model from scratch results in a very poor performance, even for the 5 billion model. They also noticed that co-fine-tuning a model regardless of its size results in a better generalization performance than simply fine-tuning it with robotic data. They attribute this to the fact that keeping the original data around the fine-tuning part of training allows the model to not forget its previous concepts during the VLM training. In spite by their chain of thought prompting method in LLMs, they fine-tuned a variant of RT2 with Palm E for just a few hundred gradient steps to increase its capability of utilizing language and action jointly, with the hope that it will elicit a more sophisticated reasoning behavior. They quantitatively observed that RT2 with chain of thought reasoning is able to answer more sophisticated commands due to the fact that it's given a place to plan its actions in natural language first. This is seen as a promising direction that provides some initial evidence that using LLMs or VLMs as planners can be combined with low-level policies in a single VLA model, as seen in figure 7, page 11. Low-rank adaptions, or LoRa, are often employed to fine-tune LLMs for new tasks. This paper investigates LoRa composability for cross-task generalization and introduces LoRa Hub, a strategic framework device for the purpose assembly of LoRa modules trained on diverse given tasks with the objective of achieving adaptable performance on unseen tasks. As the approach leverages several available LoRa modules, they refer to it as LoRa Hub and denote their learning method as LoRa Hub Learning. Importantly, LoRa Hub Learning can feasibly be accomplished with a CPU-only machine, given that it merely requires proficiency to process LLM inference. They initially trained LoRa modules on a variety of upstream tasks, specifically for N distinct upstream tasks. N LoRa modules were separately trained. LoRa Hub Learning encapsulates two main phases, the compose phase and the adapt phase. In the compose phase, all available LoRa modules are synthesized into a single module M, using a series of W sub 1 to sub 2 all the way to sub N coefficients, represented as M equals series I equals 1 and I equals N, W sub I times M sub I. Sub I is a scalar weight that can assume positive or negative values during the adapt phase. The symbol LoRa module M is combined with the LLM and its performance on few shot examples from the new task is assessed. The gradient free algorithm is subsequently deployed to update W, enhancing a single module performance example loss on the few shot examples Q. After iterating through K steps, the optimum performing LoRa module is applied to the LLM as seen in figure 2. LoRa effectively minimizes the count of trainable parameters through the process of decomposing the attention weight matrix update of the LLM into low-rank matrices. By leveraging low-rank decomposition, LoRa imposes limitations that subsequently reduce the number of trainable parameters necessary for adjusting the LLM weights. 
Flan T5 was employed as the chosen LLM. The investigation particularly targeted the Flan T5 large model. Their mythology requires a compendium of LoRa modules trained on preceding tasks. For parity with Flan, they adopted the tasks utilized to instruct Flan T5, therefore incorporating nearly 200 distinct tasks and their corresponding instructions. For the pre-filtering process during each experimental sequence, 20 LoRa modules were randomly selected for potential considerations. This method was evaluated using the Big Bench Hard or BBH benchmark, employing exact match as the evaluation metric. LoRa tuning was implemented using Hugging Face PFT library, keeping the default LoRa tuning hyperparameter at R equals 16. The open source Nevergrad optimization library implemented the gradient free method, imposing a constraint that the absolute value of LoRa weights should not exceed 1.5. At the outset, all LoRa modules were set at zero weights. The experimental data showed the superior efficacy of this method in comparison to zero-shot learning, closely resembling the performance of in-context learning in few-shot scenarios. This observation is based on an average of five separate experimentation runs. Importantly, their module utilizes an equivalent number of tokens as the zero-shot method, notably fewer than the count used by in-context learning or ICL. Where their method truly stands out is its ability to surpass ICL at optimum performance, but with less token usage, as seen in Table 1. Overall, their work shows the promise of strategic LoRa composability for rapidly adapting LLMs to diverse tasks by fostering the reuse and combination of LoRa modules that can work together more general and adaptable LLMs while minimizing training costs.